explosives that you find or loot, they can be shot to be blown up. So you can shoot them where they spawn or you can pick them up, deploy them anywhere and then shoot them to blow them up. You can also, I believe, shoot a player that's carrying one of these and it will actually down them. You can also sneak behind enemies and finish them. It's not super consistent. I haven't really seen it pop up all that much for like zombies. I think it's only for specific enemies. It does count as a stealth blow so it wouldn't attract other enemies. However, over here, um, they all sort of aggro with me. The plus side is you do get iframes. That being said, it's probably going to be really rare that you get a good opportunity to execute this, but it's good to know. Alright, after you extract with looted guns, the guns show up as destroyed weapons that you can sell to the vendors. However, you can re-equip those guns and head back inside, and then they turn from destroyed guns to disabled guns. And when you hover over this, it says that it's going to repair them or make them usable upon extraction, but that's not entirely true. It's somewhat RNG dependent from what I've tested. Once you have a destroyed weapon, you put them on, extract with them, and then they become disabled weapons. The important thing is, do not, do not, do not remove the disabled weapon from your inventory. So suppose you went into a mission with destroyed weapons and you come out, do not put everything into your stash because it's actually going to unequip the disabled weapons. And if that happens, the weapon just vanishes from thin air. Instead, move everything out manually, keep the disabled weapons, and then head back inside for another mission. That's sort of it. You find a destroyed weapon, extract with it, re-equip the destroyed weapon, extract again, then they become disabled. Important thing is, do not ever remove a disabled weapon from your inventory, no matter for whatever reason, otherwise it's just going to vanish. Go in again with disabled weapons to have a chance at them turning into real weapons. You do have to extract, otherwise it's going to fail. And that's sort of how I got access to like some of these snipers and some of these other weapons. So to sum it up, destroyed weapons, the ones you grab for the first time, they can be sold to vendors. Or you can gamble, take the destroyed weapons, extract to get disabled weapons, Take the disabled weapons and have a chance of turning them into real weapons. The mouse speed is kind of janky. From what I've gathered, there's sort of a turn speed associated with our character. I think it might be different for each character, but if you turn too quickly, the game sort of fights against you and decelerates your mouse movement. So over here, if I go left to right from the very end to the very right and I do it super quickly, it only takes me this far. However, if I do it slower, I can actually do a full 360 and even go further. So it might not be ideal to like quickly um, flick your mouse around because you're not going to cover as much distance really. Yes, it's true that you should avoid fights, but that's mostly for very early game. As you get stronger, you can absolutely take fights. Just don't overdo it because the enemy AI will start sending bigger and badder troops to hunt you down. You really don't need to play the game crouch walking the whole time. I've seen this happen so many times in multiplayer lobbies where the players are just crouch walking from the start to the extract point and it's just ridiculous. The aggro radius for most of the enemies is very forgiving and certain enemies like tanks and mechs they don't even care about you. The first thing you should do is get a silencer ASAP. The silencer allows you to safely engage with small groups without attracting every other group in the near vicinity. If you don't have a silencer and you do have to engage, then your best bet is to loot quickly and skedaddle. There really isn't a good multiplayer system, unfortunately. Um, you essentially get a list of players ordered from lowest to highest latency. That's like how much lag you're going to have. The lowest, the better. And more often than not, it's usually somebody that doesn't even know that their lobby is set to public. By default, everybody's squad is set to public. And if you prefer to play solo or you don't want to play with other randoms, then you can come into your squad menu and change it to friends only or private. I haven't really thought much of the water mechanic in terms of like losing progress. Realistically, if you're not going to play the game for like two months straight, then you've probably moved on. And if you do come back, then you can have a fresh start. You do get to keep like weapon XP and stuff. That being said, they could probably do away with this mechanic. What I do like about the water system is more water equals more vendors and more stuff. That's probably a better way to implement the water system going further and expand on that aspect rather than it causing you to lose everything you've accumulated. If you're playing solo, then you can recruit bot companions. You can come over to this vendor right here and you can recruit companions. Now the higher rank or the higher level your um, vendor is, the more things you can recruit. Right now, I can only take the mule guy, so all he does is like carry your stuff for you. Although I don't really recommend this guy because more often than not, he's going to attract enemy aggro. You can crouch, but this guy's not going to be able to crouch. 
However, once you level up the spender, you're going to get access to um, AI companions that can shoot for you. So you can essentially bring along three AI companions and you have a full squad of four. The positive thing is even if they die, as long as you manage to extract, then they'll sort of respawn. You don't have to like purchase them again. However, if everybody dies, including you, and you don't extract, then you're going to have to repurchase it. So if you have a good extraction rate, it's probably a good idea to grab some of these. And if your vendor isn't leveled up, then just sell all your junk to the vendor and over time will just level up. Headshots do in fact deal more damage. I mean, that should make sense. Not sure if this is intended, but as of now, um, you can actually drop all your unknown items. So you just press tab and start right clicking. And then if you pick them back up, it identifies them. So this might be a cool way to like grab everything and then find a safe place to organize everything. All right, and then the maps have gotcha boxes. I think every map has it. I don't know about the spawn points though, but essentially if you grab this, it takes up your large item slot. And then once you extract with this, you can open the loot box and you get a bunch of stuff. You can get like tactical equipment, like flashlights, scanners, mini turrets, and even random guns, med kits, and all kinds of stuff. Ideally, if you're out and you're not picking up water, you're probably better off grabbing this. Your rig offers you some protection from bullets, so if you have something shooting at you, try to run in the direction of the bullets, that way your rig can absorb some or most of the bullets. So far, that's what I've been able to gather. I'm not too far in. Um, I just finished Friends in Hostile Places, so there's probably more stuff left to discover.